and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, welcome back to uh, pre-calculus. We are going to work through some quick examples. Well, quick, I guess, is a relative term. Uh, the whole focus of this time is just more examples with solving polynomials of higher degree uh, that involve complex solutions specifically. And uh, again, we are uh, pulling examples. These specific examples didn't come from our book, but uh, we're paralleling uh, the book uh, by Demana Waits Foley Kennedy uh, pre-calculus that's uh, the functions and graphs, either fourth or fifth edition. And uh, so, again, the idea here is as we solve these, uh, we need to start out by uh, finding a solution somehow. Uh, that solution might be found by looking at a graph. It might be found by looking at a table, uh, but that's the... Okay, so we'll just take a quick peek at the graph. Uh, so I've typed in the equation uh, on the calculator. Um, just a quick peek, uh, I did a zoom standard. And there it go. Oh, it looks like it's going right through x equals 3. Um, that, that's how it appears here. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the table just to see if that matches. And it appears to be the same. Okay, so x equals 3. Uh, 2, negative 10, 3, 0. So remember, if you, get, if you pull your information from a graph, uh, from a... Uh, excuse me, a table, then I need to see some kind of evidence of what you looked at. And if it came from a graph, then I need to see some kind of evidence of what you looked at. Uh, so that's fine. And so uh, we're going to start with three then in our little box. Okay, and so remember we pull that first number down. And then after this is multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, and then from here, okay, let me, let me just uh, uh, stop for a second here. Just a reminder that at this point, really, you should be able to do this on your own, uh, even, uh, you know, before this. So, so please use the pause feature, you know, pause the thing and see how you can go from there. Okay, um, sorry. Okay, so what we're looking at now is this represents 1x squared minus 2x plus 10 equals 0. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the quadratic formula because I'm guessing this is not going to factor. Uh, so opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I tend to be real careful about the b squared minus 4ac part because it's so easy to make a mistake in there. And I know I've said that before. This is going to be 4 minus 40. Okay. So continuing on, x equals uh, 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 2. This is 2. You don't divide that 2 and that 36. You can't do it yet. Uh, the square root of 36 is 6. It was a negative, so we get to put an i on there. And now I can divide both of those by the 2, so this becomes 1 plus or minus 3i. And remember, we also had uh, x equals 3 as part of our excitement there. And honestly, that is it for that one. Okay. All right, well, we're going to do one more problem like this, and then we'll do another one backwards. Now, the other one we're going to do like this uh, is where we give you a zero. Okay, the last time I kind of teased you. Okay, now, again, what I'd like you to do is pause this video right now and do the whole problem yourself. Okay, so if, you, if you're ignoring me and letting it play, last chance to pause. Okay, so f now you're checking it after you already did it. Uh-huh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, oop, we're going to write the actual numbers from the problem. Not, that was weird. Sorry. All right, let's try again. Plus 104. Apparently I tapped the button on the thing. Okay. So here we go. We are going to bring down the 1, and then we're going to multiply. So 5 minus i. Remember, when you add real numbers and complex numbers, you basically are combining like terms. Okay, and now we need to multiply. 5 minus i times negative 5 minus i. Well, I'm going to do that on the calculator. And again, I'm fine if you do this on the calculator. Sorry, I have uh, leftover stuff from the last problem. Okay, so 5 minus i times negative 5 minus i. 
And that's negative 26. All right, pop them back over here. So, sorry, negative 26. So that's 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times i is 4i, so minus 4i. Add those together, negative 20 minus 4i. Now, please, please, please actually type this in. Don't, don't just th assume it's going to be negative 104, because if you made a mistake, you need to find it. Okay, so 20 minus 4i. Okay, so 20 minus 4i times 5 minus i. Ninety six minus forty I. Hmm. Negative twenty minus four I, five minus I. Aha! See? See how that worked? I had a typo. Alright, let's just uh, kind of go across here. Get to that negative twenty. Okay, so I'm gonna insert a negative. You know, real life happens, right? Negative 104, it did in fact work. Okay, good. Okay, so negative 104. Now, remember by work, what I mean is this did not, or this remainder needs to be zero. If it's not, something went wrong. Now, just a quick reminder, if 5 minus i is a zero, automatically so is its conjugate. Okay, so here we go. Same song, second verse. So... 5 plus i, oh, that's nice, look at negative 5 plus 5, that's just 0, 0, add, multiply, so 4 times i is 4i, and everything worked there, oh sweet, alright, so this represents x squared plus 0x plus 4, and remember we need that to also equal 0, so solving this, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, you can do quadratic formula here again, but this is probably not necessary to do quadratic formula. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, now when I do that, the square root of x squared is absolute value of x, and the square root of negative 4 is actually 2i, if we're working in imaginary numbers, and we are. And so when I get rid of the absolute value, that means it could have been a positive or a negative 2i. Okay? Okay. All right, so just a quick little recap. These are not the only solutions. Remember, we were given 5 minus i. We also knew about 5 plus, plus i. And I'll put it, the lovely word or in there because it, x can't be all of those things at the same time. Okay, and so these are our solutions. Okay, all right, so we're going to do one more example. And the other example that we're going to do is going backwards. Okay, so here we go. I'm giving you three zeros. I'm asking you to write a polynomial equation with real coefficients. Now, those words with real coefficients get blown over quite a bit, and the only reason they're there is to tell us that if we have an, a, a complex zero with an imaginary part, then automatically we have to throw in its conjugate. Okay, so you need to know that even though it's not in the list, you need to know it's in the list, okay? So, we're going to write an equation, either y equals or at the end you can have equals zero, whichever. And we're going to do, x mi it, the, the factor always follows the same pattern, x minus whatever the zero is. Okay, so this is that idea of opposite sign here, okay? So, it's going to be x minus square root of 3, x minus a negative square root of 3, x minus 1 minus 3i. Now, if you want to use brackets instead here, you're, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, I'm not going to. 1 plus 3i. I'm sure some math person out there is going to think I'm a, a math dropout for not using brackets, but that's okay. All right, so a couple things that need to happen here. Uh, well, first of all, this is factored form. So, as far as that's concerned, factored form, here it is. Now, if I want to do standard form, then I got a lot of multiplying to do. Now, again, you don't need both y equals and equals zero. So, so this is fine, or this, uh, you don't need both. If it said a function with real coefficients, then I would definitely pick the y equals. If it says an equation, well, that has an equal sign, and 
So it does this. So it, it doesn't matter which. All right. So now let's get on to the multiplying because th this is the ugly part of this problem. Okay. So standard form. In order to do standard form, I have to multiply all this out. So here we go. First of all, I uh, am going to get rid of the parentheses inside of the parentheses. Uh, so basically, we're distributing a negative here. So x minus 1 plus 3i, x minus 1 minus 3i. Okay. Next on my list, I always deal with the stuff with the i's first. And it's not pretty, and you saw it uh, in the previous video, but I, I'm just going to kind of do this here. Um, so x is going to multiply all three of these first. Okay, so x squared minus x minus 3ix. Now, as you know, I stack, and I just like to see like terms together. So negative 1 is going to multiply all three of these now. So negative 1 times x is again negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. I don't see any actual just numbers without variables yet, so I'll start a new column. And negative 1 times negative 3i does not have an x, so I'm going to say plus uh, 3i on the end. Okay, one more of those to go. Okay, and so we're going to do uh, 3i times all three of these. So 3ix, well, that's going to go under my other 3ix. This one's a positive. 3i times negative 1. And then 3i times 3i is negative 9i squared. And again, the reason I'm putting it here is because i squared is a number. Okay, so I'm going to take care of all of that together. So x squared minus 2x, goodbye to you, goodbye to you. Remember that this is really plus 9. And so 1 plus 9 is 10. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I, I really don't want square roots flying around, so I'm really hoping that since these are kind of opposite sign, that I'm hoping the square roots go away with this. Okay, so I'm going to, now this is a little easier. I'm just going to FOIL be, uh, or distribute, however you want to say it, uh, x times both of these, so x squared plus square root of 3 times x. And then uh, inner would be minus square root of 3 times x. And last times last would be minus square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. Well, these go away. They add up to 0, x squared minus 3. Okay, so all said and done so far, it's those two now have to be multiplied. So I'm almost done. I know this is, this is a long problem, and it's because of all this multiplying. And so just be patient. Okay, again, this x squared has to multiply all three of these. So x squared times x squared, x squared times 2x, x squared times 10. Okay, and then I'm going to do negative 3 times all three of these. Now, negative 3 times x squared, negative 3 times 2x, and negative 3 times 10. Okay, and so we'll just do some adding here. x to the fourth minus 2x to the third, 7x squared, 6x minus 30. Okay, and again, I was looking for a function. Uh, with those zeros or an equation with those solutions, and we're done. Okay, so that was that one's standard form. What color did I pick? Green. Okay, so green it is. And uh, now, what's cool about this is I just gave you a big old long ugly problem. Uh, equation, if you wanted to for practice, and I'm not going to say you have to do it, but you could actually take this equation and grab one of those zeros, like for instance this one, the 1 minus 3i, three, three you could take that and then start this problem just like we did that last example a minute ago and go backwards and see if you can get back to those same zeros. Okay? All right, well, that's it. Uh, thank you for hanging on, and uh, the hope is just that you see enough examples, and, uh, if you, and if you have questions, you can see me in class. Bye.